morning youtubers I'm going to do another video just to show you how to test your coolant this is an area that a lot of people find unnecessary they just think it's oh, well you just look at it if it looks good it's good but uh, I decided a long time ago that's not the way to do it it's got to be a better way because since buying this refractometer tool which I'll show you in a minute I've discovered that coolant that looks good is not necessarily good and coolant that looks crap is not necessarily crap unless you test it properly so to test it properly and to make sure that your engines getting the correct amount of corrosion protection anti-corrosion protection you really need to get yourself one of these or go to a garage that actually tests coolant and not just looks at it and changes it periodically and changing coolant is another thing too. Changing the coolant and flushing it properly is vital to get the correct levels right. So what I'm going to do is show you this refractometer, which is over here in the vise. So this here is a refractometer. It looks a little bit like a little uh, tiny miniature telescope, but it's not. So what we have here is a surface in which we take a sample of a coolant using one of these and we put it across that surface we flip this down and then we measure it now I'll give you an idea of what it looks like in there when um, there is no coolant on there so you can see so you'll see it's all blue you've got your scales there it's all blue by the way you can actually test the specific gravity of uh, battery fluid or battery acid and also um, the amount of inhibitor you may have in your window washers window washer bottle uh, can be tested with the same uh, same device so let's go ahead and take a sample of coolant out of this Mercedes and um, we'll test it so this is a car we're going to test you might say car's about 18 months old you might say well why are you testing coolant on an 18 month old car well the answer is simple I've tested cars that are 18 months two years old and the coolant level is incorrect um, and the cars aren't getting the correct level of protection I've had to actually flush the oil uh, flush the oil flush the coolant at those sort of case so it's very important so let's go ahead and check it so on this particular car all we need to do is take a sample out of the reservoir this is a pressurized reservoir so it's going to give you norm, normally if it's not pressurized it's just an overflow reservoir you need to take it out of the radiator via the radiator cap but this is the radiator cap it's pressurized and these lines circulate coolant from the engine and radiator into this bottle and back out so everything circulates so what you're going to get out of here is exactly what you're going to get out of the engine and radiator as well so um, good place to start lots of place you want to go to so let's go and test it okay we're back at the refractometer we take the coolant and place it across make sure this whole blue area is nicely covered uh, if you get any air bubbles in there just get rid of them by tapping them out just flip this over and let me go around here and let's see where our readings at and now there's the white area that I was telling you about uh, just don't need to set this up properly there you go we're a propylene coolant G13, so that's about minus 39. Perfect. Uh, I'll show you what to expect uh, from the graph. Okay, this is a graph that shows you the uh, temperature versus ethylene glycol, and that grayed out area in the center here, this area here, this is your range so you start to go out of range as soon as you hit minus 20 so i'll just bring that in a bit minus 20 after anything from there upwards minus 10 minus 20 to zero and 
Oh God forbid it's above that. If, well, it can't be above that because there'll be no glycol. Uh, you're out of range. So you're within range from this point here, which is about 43 to 45. 20 to minus 20 to minus 43 to 45. That is your range. And um, we're, we're right in there. We're at the minus 39, so we've got the right amount of uh, ethylene glycol and um, basically the correct amount of inhibitors. They both um, they both basically match each other. If you've got the right amount of glycol, you've also got the right amount of corrosion inhibitors and that's the most important thing and that's what we're testing for. Yes, we're testing for glycol because any cars that live in very cold areas or people going to the snow, they want to make sure they've got the correct level of glycol in there to stop the cooling system freezing. But the, uh, at the same time, the correct amount of glycol is also the correct amount of inhibitors. So this is a sign that I've put up in my workshop for customers to read. And it's basically, you neglect any of those three things, transmission fluid, engine oil, engine coolant, and you're up for the big bucks. No ifs and buts about it. I've seen it time and time and time again. Um, engine oil not just lubricates, but it also cools. So when engine seals get sludged up and, and a whole heap of crud behind them, they are no longer getting cooling that they require. They start to prematurely harden. And in fact, they are actually overheating because all that sludge building up behind them. And then they, they prematurely go hard and they start to leak. Engine coolant. Don't get the correct amount of inhibitors in there. You start getting internal corrosion. You got an engine like that Mercedes out there. Um, actually, much, uh, yeah, it'll probably have an aluminium block, but it'll definitely have an aluminium head. And you get corrosion in those areas. You got head gasket problems um, and you may actually end up having to throw the head away depending on how bad it is or you can repair it by welding but whatever it's going to cost transmission fluid you don't change the transmission fluid on time now this is a little bit of a um, sticking point for some because a lot of transmissions are service for life service for life in my book means you've shortened the life of the transmission and because people believe that you can't service them, when in actual fact you can, you can change the oil. And changing the oil on that note in the transmission is probably paramount. Um, and, and it's about the only thing you can do, and it's about the only effective thing you can do, um, because most of them don't have filters, they just have strainers. So just keeping that oil fresh and clean at all times is going to preserve the life of the transmission. So you get a transmission failure, you get an engine failure, you get a cooling system failure, you get coolant, uh, cooling pumps, you get radiators leaking, cooling pumps leaking. You, you, it just goes on and on and on. And it all can be avoided by proper maintenance. So I'm, I'm a stickler for that. Uh, I, I do uh, quite a few hundred cars here from my location at my house. And... I am just always pushing the need for proper servicing, on-time servicing, so I can stay on top of customers' cars. Their running costs over time are very small because they're not getting any major failures whatsoever. And lastly, brake fluid. Brake fluid is another thing that, when neglected and overlooked, it gets moisture build up inside and that reduces your boiling point. Um, I test that every service as well. So brake fluids generally change every two to three years. Uh, I've seen it actually go quite a bit longer than that in a fully sealed system. But at the same time, we're testing brake fluid up here at the reservoir. So if brake fluid is still testing there after, good after three years, I would probably still be changing it anyway, um, four years max because down at your brake calipers could be a complete different story to what you're seeing up here. So always err on the side of caution. Well, I do, because I'm looking after other people's cars, so why why wouldn't I? You know, it's um, I'm looking out, looking out for their best interests, so I'll make sure that it gets done. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this short video just to give you a bit of an idea of the importance of maintenance 
and um, some of the tests that can be done uh, you'll always you, you already see a test I did on this very same car regarding the battery over there so um, yeah battery coolant brake fluid transmission fluid transmission fluid I generally start looking at it around 60,000 K's um, to see just how contaminated it is if it is quite significantly contaminated I start changing it often I will change it three three services in a row because as we all know you can't get all the fluid out a lot of it gets left behind in the transmission and in the torque converter so I will change that three services in a row to try and clean that up and then stay on top of it um, it's it's really important because it's the transmission fluid does not last forever and it will eventually break down to the point that it's just damaging everything inside the transmission and the only way you can combat it is to refresh it keep it clean so yeah hope you enjoyed the video talk again soon so yeah